The Lord Lord be be with you. We meet in the name of God, Father, Father, Son and and Holy Holy Spirit. Spirit. So good morning, Uh, my name's Ross and I'm the rector here at St John's Orangefield in East Belfast. And my name is Sonia and I'm one of the lay readers here. We really want to welcome you to this service of uh, morning prayer. Uh, It draws from both the Church of Ireland and from the Presbyterian Church and from various Celtic Christian sources. As we record this service, as usual, Sonia will be speaking out the responses, some of which we think are familiar to you. And if they are, why don't you join in and speak those out with Sonia? So we call each other to worship then, using some words from Psalm 34 today. I will bless the Lord at all times. God's praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt God's name together. I sought the Lord, and God answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Look to the Lord and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. As we come to worship, let's share a moment of silence as we look to the Lord and gaze on his goodness. One thing I have asked of the Lord, this is what I seek. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Who is it that you seek? We seek the Lord our God. Do you seek him with all your heart? Amen. Lord have mercy. Do you seek him with all your soul? Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your mind? Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your strength? Amen. Christ, have mercy. God loves us so much that we are called children of God. When we see God face to face, we will resemble our Lord. So anticipation, in anticipation of that day, We come before God and confess our sin. We repent and seek to be reshaped into a closer image of the one we follow and worship. So let us pray. Lord of every tribe and nation, on this week when we particularly remember and give thanks for all the saints, we are mindful of the countless ways we fail to follow their example of loyalty and faithfulness. We capitulate to idolatry, We worship the false gods of our culture instead of bowing down before the Lamb on the throne. Forgive us for acting as if earthly powers are ultimate. Help us to find our hope, our life, our salvation in you alone. Reshape us in ways that glorify you. Amen. Who taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in the Lord. Oh, fear the Lord, you God's holy ones. For those who fear God have no want. Friends, believe the good news. Through Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Gracious God, we come to worship, carrying with us the concerns of the world and the worries on our hearts. In the light of your word, reveal to us that which truly matters and those steps that will take us closer to you, O Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Proverbs, chapter 16, beginning at verse 21. The wise in heart are called discerning and gracious words promote instruction. Prudence is a fountain of life to the prudent, but folly brings punishment to fools. The hearts of the wise make their mouths prudent, and their lips promote instruction. Gracious words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul, 
and healing to the bones. There is a way that appears to be right, but in the end it leads to death. The appetite of labourers works for them, their hunger drives them on. A scoundrel plots evil, and on their lips it is like a scorching fire. A perverse person stirs up conflict, and a gossip separates close friends. A violent person entices their neighbour and leads them down a path that is not good. Whoever winks with their eye is plotting perversity. Whoever purses their lips is bent on evil. Grey hair is a crown of splendour. It is attained in the way of righteousness. Better a patient person than a warrior, one with self-control than one who takes a city. The lot is cast into the lap, but its every decision is from the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. And for our psalm uh, this morning, we're going to read some verses from Psalm 5, beginning at verse 1. Listen to my words, Lord. Consider my lament. Hear my cry for help, my King and my God. For to you I pray. In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my requests before you and wait expectantly. For you are not a God who is pleased with wickedness. With you, evil people are not welcome. The arrogant cannot stand in your presence. You hate all who do wrong. You destroy those who tell lies. The bloodthirsty and deceitful you, Lord, detest. But I, by your great love, can come into your house. In reverence I bow down toward your holy temple. Lead me, Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before me. Not a word from their mouth can be trusted. Their heart is filled with malice. Their throat is an open grave. With their tongues they tell lies. Declare them guilty, O God. Let their intrigues be their downfall. Banish them for their many sins, for they have rebelled against you. But let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them, that those who love your name may rejoice in you. Surely, Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favour as with a shield. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, and, and shall be forever. forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 15, beginning at verse 1. Then some Pharisees and teachers of the law came to Jesus from Jerusalem and asked, why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? They don't wash their hands before they eat. Jesus replied, Why do you break the command of God for the sake of your tradition? For God said, Honour your father and mother. And anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to death. But you say, that if anyone declares that what might have been used to help their father or mother is devoted to God, they are not to honour their father or mother. Thus, you nullify the word of God for the sake of your tradition. You hypocrites, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. These people honour me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. So we all know that uh, childhood saying that we used to rhyme off even through tears sometimes. Uh, Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can never hurt me. Mm. Of course, it's nonsense. It's 100% baloney because many people live with the knowledge that words can scar us for life. 
King David, who experienced much of the rich tapestry of life, he experienced the good and the downright terrible, he wrote in Psalm 64 that evildoers sharpen their tongues like swords and aim cruel words like deadly arrows. And whether you're 18 or 80, you can probably recall the deadly arrows of someone's harsh words, particularly if that person was close to you. Maybe you still hear those words from years ago, like an endless loop playing inside your head. You'll never amount to anything. You're nothing like your brother, sister. I never loved you. You'll never change. But just as words can tear down and destroy, so they have the power to build up and to heal. Proverbs 18, 21 says that the tongue has the power of life as well as of death. While Proverbs 15, 4 puts it this way, the soothing tongue is a tree of life, but a perverse tongue crushes the spirit. In our reading today, also from Proverbs, uh, Proverbs 16, 24, we're told that gracious words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. Back in the days when Proverbs was written, honeycomb was used as a healing agent. It made aches and ailments go away or at least seem less painful. It was like the all-purpose healer. And if our words are to be like honeycomb, they should make anyone or any situation better, not worse. Indeed, what the Bible says here is that our words have the potential to bring healing. It reminds me of what Paul wrote to the church in Ephesus. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And our words are like honeycomb if they heal rather than hurt, if they build up rather than tear down. By the way, I'm told that the flavour and intensity of honeycomb depends on what kind of nectar the bees drink in. Clover nectar produces honey that is light and sweet, whereas another flower's nectar might create a dark, bitter product. So a smart beekeeper will ensure that a beehive is strategically placed near a large batch of clover because they'll want the sweetest, most delectable honey. Beekeepers also know how crucial it is to place a beehive where the sun will hit it first thing in the morning, which warms up the bees and causes them to get to work, churning out the greatest quantity of honey possible. So in short, the sweetness of the honeycomb is determined by what the bee drinks in and the amount of time it spends in the sun. I'm sure you can see the parallel with the sweetness of our words. If we want to be encouraging, uplifting, loving, embracing and healing with our words, then we need to be careful about what we are drinking into our lives and we need to be soaking up the sun, S-O-N. One last thought. While we can't control what others say about us, we can control what we take in and dwell on. Since toxic words can damage our souls, we need to guard our hearts against them. You know, Facebook and Twitter is awash with vitriolic words, but they don't need to get in here and preoccupy us. In Proverbs 4, the writer says to his son, listen closely to my words, and above all else, Guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. We would do well to heed this advice. When we hear the words of others, then we can choose to receive them as truth or to reject them as lies. Now, of course, some criticism can be constructive and we can learn from even a grain of truth. But the best place to do this is in the security of God's affirmation and love for us. So we can also choose to keep what God says about us as core and the dominant message in our heart. And then from that place of love and security, receive wisely what anyone else says and speak out his words of hope and life to others. Words which are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. Amen. Let's affirm our faith this morning in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, 
God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Today in our intercessions, we're going to uh, again use some slightly adapted prayers written by our friends in the Presbyterian Church. Lord, all the saints sing your praise, bow down in worship and pray without ceasing before your throne. In gratitude for their witness and in thanksgiving that you call us children of God, we come to you seeking your will, thankful to be in relationship with you and all the saints. You tell us that the poor in spirit are blessed. While we often seek fleeting riches, and worldly status, you remind us that those whose focus is on you, those who seek to serve, and the least of these, are the ones who know your blessing. When we struggle to find our way to you, turn us toward the poor and the poor in spirit, in order that we might be found in and with you. You say that those who mourn are blessed, in this time of pandemic and economic upheaval, natural disasters and human inflicted violence, many of your children are in mourning. Comfort them in their distress, relieve their suffering, make your blessing evident and felt. You name blessed those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. In a time when injustice is unmasked on every corner, and earthly powers exploit and abuse, make us hungry for righteousness. Feed us on the bread of life that never fails to satisfy, and never slake our thirst for doing good. The meek, the merciful, the pure in heart, while the world overlooks and ignores them, you, Lord, proclaim them blessed. Knowing this divine truth, turn us toward and make us one among the meek, the merciful, the pure in heart, who commit to following you, no matter where you lead them. When strife seems unending and violence grips without surrender, grant us the courage to be peacemakers, those who refuse to give in to the idea that might makes right, but instead stand stalwart in your mercy. Do not let us shrink from following you, even when it requires risk and taking a stand, no matter the cost. Help us to be numbered among your good and faithful servants all days and in the end. And we pray that all this would be answered through and in the name of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Christ is a light, illumine and guide us. Christ is a shield, overshadow us. Christ under us, Christ over us, Christ beside us on our left and our right. This day be within and without us, lowly and meek, yet all-powerful. Be in the heart of each to whom we speak, in the mouth of each who speaks unto us. This day be within and without us, lowly and meek, yet all-powerful. Christ is a light. Christ is a shield, Christ beside us on our left and our right. Amen. Gathering all these our prayers into one, we pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, your, your will be done, be done on earth, earth as in heaven. Give, give us today our daily bread. Forgive, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so as we draw to a close and part company again, may the God of peace sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and will do this. So the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Thank you for joining with us in worship today. Just a reminder that you can also join us on Sundays for worship together here in church. We meet at 10 a.m. in the church halls for more contemporary worship and at 11.30 a.m. in the church building for more traditional worship. Both the 10 a.m. and the 11.30 a.m. services are recorded and posted online for those who are unable to join us physically at this time. So also stu other stuff continues as well. We meet virtually through this Facebook page through our WhatsApp groups and in, in other ways as well, including our Zoom-based Bible study, which is looking at Galatians, and which meets every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. So for all these Zoom meeting login details and anything else, contact Sonia or myself. So keep in touch and see you next time. God bless you and keep you. God bless. <laughs>